The wire forest landscape is being transformed through a dramatic restoration project called Grow With Wire. The forest covers 72 square kilometres, a diverse landscape that is growing through the project in many different ways. Not just by planting and growing new trees, but by engaging new people to restore the unique landscape of wire and celebrate its rich working history. Grow With Wire is also creating jobs for the future, running an apprenticeship scheme and training local people in woodland skills. There are 18 projects in total and this film will give you a flavour of how Grow With Wire has been working to improve the landscape, heritage and biodiversity that make the wire forest area so special. Much of the wire area is designated as Triple SI, a site of special scientific interest and many rare species of flora and fauna can be found here. One of the flagship animals, the adder, is being studied using radio telemetry through the Grow With Wire project. That's brilliant, well done. And the other glove. She could be a breeder, what we tagged last year called Rosie. And if it is, it'd be interesting to tag her as a non-breeder this year, which we'll need to check with the photos to make sure that she is rosy, and if not, we'll uh, tag her anyway, just for the interest of a non-breeding female on this site and see where she moves to. We've only got a few tags, so we've got to be a bit selective. The tagging is really to establish just how far these adders will travel in a season. Um, so far, we've only been able to do a couple of months, and we would like to continue it on through the summer because we've only got part of the story at the moment so it is all very interesting but we need to know what habitat they're using and need to take them through a season. It will all help with habitat management. Okay. She's definitely that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just the experts who are working hard but lots of Grow With Wire volunteers. This is an important wildlife corridor that is mowed and raked to improve the habitat for invertebrates such as butterflies and for reptiles. Many butterflies are getting fewer and fewer in number. What we're doing in wire now is, especially through Grow With Wire, opening up areas to manage those sites for these butterflies in the hope that they're going to expand their populations and in 10 years time the whole of wire is going to be so much better. I've been raking up the grass and it helps make a difference so that all of the plants and flowers can come through and grow and then all of the different insects can come and breed here and help attract the butterflies and stuff. It's really fun and you make friends but at the same time you're doing things with the woods and the environment and helping animals. Through the Grow With Wire partnership scheme and the Back to Orange project, we've been opening out these wonderful sunny south-facing banks, especially for the pearl-bordered fritillary. These volunteers are on a Grow With Wire butterfly ID training day. The pearl-bordered fritillary that's on the wing now is very similar to the small pearl-bordered fritillary that will be flying in about two weeks' time. And on the pearl-bordered, there's just a central silver spot, but on the small pearl-bordered, there are several. Yep, got one. Wire is now one of the last remaining good areas of woodland to see woodland butterflies. You can see at this distance just how orange they are. Mm and beautiful silver dots on the underwing. You can perhaps see that. Through the Grow With Wire Butterfly ID training days, our intention is to encourage people to, to monitor and to record butterflies in the wire forest. Grow With Wire has been preserving wildlife habitats within the forest itself and also within other surrounding landscape environments, such as orchards. The old trees in this orchard, particularly the old cherries and the old apples, are very important for the, the insects that live inside them. The larvae of many of these species eat the decaying wood and develop slowly in the trees. And in a way, an old orchard like this is mimicking an ancient wood pasture. 
If you look very closely at some of the trees, you can occasionally find the pellets of the noble chafer beetle, which I'm looking at here, and nationally they're extremely rare. So as part of the Grow With Wire project, we're trying to look after these old orchards in this area, particularly for these beetles and also for a lot of other things. One of the most important parts of the project of Grow With Wire is to restore many of the orchards that are around the whole forest area. We're targeting 22 sites. This is one of them at Bowcastle Farm. And as well as planting new trees, we are actually working hard to restore some of the old ones. And this means taking off some of the wood that otherwise would cause the tree to split open and die prematurely. That's it. The great thing about this project is that we've got a lot of volunteers who love coming out and planting these new trees. They'll be then with us through to the autumn of each year where we'll be picking the fruit, we'll be pressing it and making gorgeous fruit juice that we hope eventually we'll be able to get into the schools in and around the wire forest. So again, there'll be a value to these orchards. The volunteers come from all sorts of walks of life. Okay, if you get that up the top then, Matt, and you get it reasonably tight around the tree. That's good. Some of them are unemployed folks, some have taken early retirement some younger folk who are really keen to learn more about orchards. But the great thing about Grow With Wire is it's given us the tools and given us the support to make this whole work possible. As well as restoring the forest and the surrounding landscape, Grow With Wire has also been unravelling some of the hidden secrets below the forest canopy. To understand the landscape character with a high-tech survey called LiDAR. LiDAR is an aerial laser survey and its aims are to provide a very detailed topographic record of the, the surface, the ground surface, even looking through the tree canopy of a forest. Today, these volunteers are investigating 17th century coal mining pits, which were discovered thanks to the LiDAR aerial survey. One of the key aims for Grow With Wire has been to identify surface archaeological features, so earthwork features um, that survive from many, many different periods in history that are fossilised within the landscape of wire forest. That's called the first return data. Those are the lasers that are reflected from the tree canopy and you can see the canopy of trees in Amer Wood with the lane running through the middle of that image and then with the computer we can strip out, deforest that landscape virtually and that reveals the forest floor. So you can immediately see, I hope, all these intricate sort of lines and curious shapes in the landscape that are coming through. And the area that Carol and Jackie uh, are currently working in, which is down at the bottom of the screen here, mine pits are, are quite clear, I hope, as the sort of small donut shaped features that you can see on the LiDAR image. And that's enabling us to then investigate all of these sites on the ground with the volunteers. For the first time, we can take a really good long-range look at the landscape development of wire. 30. 30. Five to six metres. Six metres next, Carol. Yep, yeah, six metres. And it's 125. Six metres, 125. So we're seeing everything in context, and even the seemingly mundane features like trackways and, and small quarry pits that might seem quite boring, when you see them in context with one another and the whole landscape, then you can start to reconstruct the story of how that landscape has developed over time. And that's absolutely critical to writing a history of wire. Wire's history is fascinating. Along the Dalles Brook, there were six water mills. This is Knowles Mill, named by the National Trust, its current owners, after the Knowles family of millers, who worked here in the 19th century. Grow With Wire has restored the floor and mill following years of flood damage. But we've not just been restoring, we've been building too. Our impressive new discovery centre is a sustainable building that will be used as an information hub for local communities. And we were lucky enough to have a local lad who also happens to be a world famous rock legend, Robert Plant, willing and able to open it for us. I've obviously, I've lived around here all my life, 60, 50, 
years um, <laughs> and often um, spent eons of time in this beautiful environment. This beautiful woodland has been a backdrop to the lives and times of all of us local people for centuries. I congratulate Grow With Wire for the amazing dynamic they've created here. This beautiful building, a true discovery centre, provides a centre for information covering the story of the forest, its wildlife, its restoration and management. And the building itself provides great encouragement in design, sustainability and necessary environmental awareness. No cutting of ribbons here. We thought it would be more appropriate to saw a log. <laughs> one of the sillier things I've <laughs> I named the ship. <laughs> Wire Forest is about 6,000 acres in size. That's 6,000 football pitches of woodland. And all that woodland is now managed sustainably. So when we fell timber, when it gets old enough, we can then replace it with young trees. So we have that cycle of renewal throughout the forest. So most people, all they see is it cut down. They don't often see where the product goes. In the new discovery centre is a wood chip boiler that shows you where some of that timber is being used to heat both the room space and the hot water system in the new building and in the visitor centre as well. So the project has introduced different varieties of wood fuel systems, some logs, some chip boilers and from that we've now created demand for timber and we're starting to now see woodland being managed to produce that, that product and at the same time if they are cutting trees down, they're replaced. If we look, for instance, at the chip store, that stores chips ready to use, and then they're fed to owners who have chip boilers, such as the one at the new Discovery Centre. There's one in a school, there's one in a local community building. They're all using timber from the wire forest. Growth Wire has been a fantastic scheme. I think you know, all of us in the community have really benefited in one way or another. I think it's helped many of us understand the forest a lot more. It's, it's certainly brought lots more people into the forest. Grow With Wire has been supporting people's health and well-being through accessibility schemes in the forest, encouraging lots of different groups to get out on foot and explore. It's the best way of keeping fit and it doesn't cost anything. Of course there's the beautiful surroundings which lifts the spirit anyway and we do like to think we're a nice friendly group. Grow With Wire is all about making it accessible to, to everyone. It isn't just the physical side of it, it's the mental, it's the social, it's the interaction with human beings. It's brilliant. Just give it a try. I can, I can only recommend it. You have to try it to believe it. The difference it can, can actually make to you as a person. One of the aims of Grow With Wire was to open up the forest to people who struggle to access it, people who perhaps can't walk very far. And for that purpose, we've managed to buy three off-road buggies. Uh, these vehicles have a range of 30 miles, so people can now venture deep into the forest during their trip. I'm able to get round the forest and see places that I never saw before that I used to do when I was able to walk. It's a very good idea, especially for the disabled and the elderly people because we don't all want to play bingo. <laughs> I think they're great as well because of the ease of which they get over the obstacles, it makes it look so simple. Yeah. He likes the rough road. <laughs> He prefers the rough road to the, to the ordinary flat. Go, going off piste, I think they call it, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> Alan and the walking group are certainly keeping this forest landscape alive, just like all the other people who have benefited from the Grow With Wire scheme. It's been a real privilege to work in Grow With Wire. I've seen some real change to a landscape, to a precious landscape.
I've seen targets exceeded and I've seen people benefit and I've seen wildlife benefit and I know that those benefits will go on for years to come. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, that's lovely. That was nice, wasn't it?